A viral video is going rounds on social media of emotional Salim Swali begging President Ruto for forgiveness as Ruto issues directive. The former NTV Swahili anchor landed a job in 2023 as the Director of Communications in the Office of Prime Cabinet Secretary Musalia Mudavadi. Also, another shocking news have been found by Kenyans on Twitter. Sorry, Kenyans on X. And this article talks of a TV boy who is embroiled in yet another scandal. This article seems to be coming from a news gazette, and it goes ahead by saying in a shocking twist, a former high-ranking Kenyan TV presenter who later served under a prominent cabinet minister is back in the headlines after being dismissed for alleged graft in the minister's office. He now faces serious charges of sodomizing multiple high school boys with some incidents reportedly occurring in his visitor's room and underground car parking of malls, according to police sources. According to months of anticipation, this flashy media personality has yet to step foot in a courtroom, yet keeps sodomizing young boys raising concerns about corruption on the system. Whether the article is true or not, let's first understand the following. In June this year Swale was arrested over an alleged fraud at the Prime Cabinet Secretary's office. And that's not all. Grab what you normally drink and watch this video till the end as things are even getting hotter, as I will reveal it all in this video. So stick with me. Picture this. It's 2023. And a well-known news anchor, Salim Swale, who used to work with NTV, has just landed a pretty important job. He's now the Director of Communications in the office of Musalia Mudavadi, the Prime Cabinet Secretary. Things seem to be going great for him, but as life often throws curveballs, it wasn't long before trouble found him. Now you see, before all this, Salim had a solid role in Nakuru County as the Chief Officer for IT, e-government, and public communication. Sounds fancy, right? But here's where it gets tricky. Fast forward to June 2024, and Swale found himself on the wrong side of the law. Cops were after him. And not just him, five other people were in the same boat. They were all arrested. And you might be wondering, what happened well? Let me explain. There was a tip-off about some fishy business going on at the Prime Cabinet Secretary's office. The police, always on their toes, carried out some intense surveillance at the railway office. It turns out, there were some sneaky fraudsters up to no good, and Swale somehow got tangled up in the mess. Now, picture this Swale, who once had everything going for him, was suddenly on his knees, begging for forgiveness. He tried reaching out to President William Ruto, the man who he once saw as a father figure, someone he trusted and served loyally for over a year and a half. But here's the kicker Ruto wasn't picking up the phone. Swale even sent people to talk to him, but it was like talking to a brick wall. Imagine the frustration. In a heartfelt video, Swale poured his heart out, saying, I'm sorry for what happened. I lost everything in the blink of an eye. Can you imagine losing everything just like that? I kid you not, it was a tough pill for him to swallow. But wait, there's more. The story doesn't end there. President Ruto, who's known for his no-nonsense approach, made some rather shocking remarks recently. He talked about what he called immoral misconduct by the public, especially during protests. He labelled these protesters as criminals, which didn't sit well with many people. You see, Ruto's comments came off as lacking empathy, especially since some youths lost their lives during these protests. People expected him to calm things down, but instead, his words seemed to fan the flames, making things even worse. So here we are, left wondering will President Ruto respond to Swale's plea for forgiveness? Can he show empathy when so many people believe he's been harsh? And here's the big question, is Ruto more focused on transforming Kenya or just on winning the next election? Let me tell you, Ruto insists that his eyes are not on 2027, but on changing Kenya for the better. He's been saying that Kenya needs leaders who make the right decisions, not just popular ones. But will those decisions include forgiving Swale? Only time will tell. And before I go, make sure you hit that subscribe button like this video and share it with your friends because you won't want to miss what happens next.